Hi, I'm Dario Cortez. Berkeley College believes that all citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect our daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and the partners in public television. Access to quality health care, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, making healthcare work. And by MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. Welcome to Caucus New Jersey, folks. I'm Steve Adubato. More importantly, right here in the studio to talk about improving access to health care are Eva Turbiner, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Zoo Fall Health Centers. You've been around for 25 years. Yes, yes. And Dr. Jean Cheslock, President of Parker Family Health Centers since 2000. Dr. Pamela Clark, President and Chief Executive Officer of Newark Community Health Centers. And finally, Bill Lovett, Executive Director of New Jersey Alliance of YMCA's. I want to thank all of you for joining us. We're talking about um, this part of our Healthy Living series, access to quality health care. We're going to be morphing into a very in-depth discussion of childhood obesity because, frankly, without the proper access to quality health care, that is just one of the many issues, correct, doctor? That is a byproduct of not having that access. Is that fair to say? And that is a byproduct of not having access, I believe in uh, a large account, Steve. Okay. We are looking to partner with uh, my partner right next door here, the Y, to address the issue of access to exercise programs, to nutritional programs, to just the whole uh, attack on the front end of care. Front where end. Front end, mean? cheapest, before you have a disease, before you have a disability, before you are overweight, that is the time to approach the issue, not after the fact. It's awfully hard as adults to lose a pound. And kids, as you know, in unfortunate situations, uh, do not have access to the most uh, desirable diet. Hmm. Cheap food is cheap. Yep, let's, let's break this concept of access down. Um, is access tantamount to Education, is that what it is? Is, is ed education only a piece of access? Meaning, if I have information, education, about where I need to go to get what I need to get to take care of myself and my family, is that access to health care or is that not enough? Well, it's one piece of go it. Ahead. Certainly, uh, access includes overcoming other barriers. So, yes, you need to know what you need and where to go. You need to be able to get there, so you need transportation. You need to be able to have somebody who speaks your language. You need to have a way to pay for services. Um, and all of those are what really lead to full access to care. There also have to be providers somewhere in your community willing to see you. Speaking of providers, I promised, uh, since you're all nonprofits, uh, if you were for profits, we would not do that. Uh -huh. uh, let's make sure we give everyone a chance to describe who you are, what you do, and who you serve. Go. Uh, Zufall Health Center is a federally qualified health center serving the low-income population of Northwest New Jersey. We've been in business for about 25 years, and we are now serving 15,000 patients with 46,000 visits in Morris, Sussex, Warren, and Hunterdon counties. Most of those folks with without insurance. Seventy percent have no insurance whatsoever. Most of the rest have Medicaid, Medicare, New Jersey Family Care. Dr. Cheslock, go. We are in business for 12 years in Red Bank, taking care of the uninsured only in Monmouth County. Uh, as I said before, we've, uh, or maybe I didn't, we've transformed from primarily an immigrant community to one that is now serving a majority of American citizens, which mm -hmm. I think is a reflection of the drastic change that's going on in uh, health care in America. Got it. And important because you have also said, by the way, uh, I said you served 8,600 patients last year. You said, Steve, it's over 13,000. And the total number you've served? We're going to pass 100,000 shortly now. The need gets even greater. Dr. Clark, go. Tell everyone yes. what your organization is, who you serve. Newark Community Health Centers serve 
um, Newark, the surrounding areas of Orange, East Orange, and Irvington. We have actually been in business for 25 years, Steve. And in addition to that, we have comprehensive primary care service to all of the people in those community. Right now, we serve 30,000 patients in all of our sites. Who comes in? Ah, people who have no insurance, people who have um, low income, and also we're now serving people who do have a job, but they are called people who don't have access to care. And so we serve all these range of people in the community and we see everybody, everybody that walks through a door. Do not get turned away. Do you do Nobody not get turned, turned away, away if you come to one yes. of your centers? How many centers? We have seven centers in Orange, East Orange, all of Newark, and also in Irvington. If you log on to our website as part of our Healthy Living Initiative done in cooperation with Horizon, I promise you we'll connect you to all of the other nonprofits here. Go, Bill, because uh, I'm a kid who grew up in the Y and the Boys Club. and. So the fact that you are connected to this initiative is fascinating to me because I'm thinking, look at all those kids and those families connected to the Y um, and the opportunity here. Go. So the New Jersey Alliance of Ys is composed of 41 YMCAs throughout the state from Salem all the way up to Wyckoff in Sussex County. A half million members, a quarter million of them are under the age of 18. Uh, in New Jersey, we're the largest provider of aquatics, child care, day camp, after school child care, and what I'd call preventative obesity uh, services um, uh, for both adults and kids and have significant partnerships with both the Horizon Foundation and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. To, to talk about, by the way, thank you for teaching our kids to swim at the Montclair Y. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to do that. Talk about the Healthy You initiative. What well, is it? Sure. Well, we've had a relationship with the Horizon Foundation for about six years and the Healthy You program is really an obesity prevention program utilizing the CATCH curriculum. CATCH. CATCH. It mm -hmm. comes out of the University of Texas mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's a program that addresses um, uh, exercise as well as nutrition and family involvement. And with the Horizon Foundation, we've, we, we've really done some innovative things. We uh, have the program implemented for 18,000 after school kids at over 400 sites throughout the state. And that was our phase one. But now in phase two, we're doing two things that I think are really interesting. One is that we are doing a preschool catch program at all the Y sites in New Jersey. So that's 5,000 kids and it's the largest preschool catch project in the United States. And then the second one, which I think in some ways could be more profound, is that in 50 public schools, we are partnering with public educators to implement the catch program in those schools. We're going to be evaluating and tracking the results, and we, it's our hope that that intervention, compared to other schools, will demonstrate just how important it is for schools to really become points of light in terms of wellness and, and health in their community. Okay, so here we go. I'm listening to each one of you talk about your initiatives, and I, I know all the work that each one of you are doing because we've, we've done some of this programming before, and I'm thinking, all right, look. Look how great this work is. So we are improving access. We are providing access. There we go. We're getting it done. Right, Eva? Well, what goes on in the exam room in 15-minute visit is only a very small part of wellness. We know that there are social indicators and there's lifestyle issues so that we know that when we get a patient into our exam room who has diabetes and or hypertension and other kinds of chronic illnesses, 62% of our chronically ill patients are obese or overweight we know that there's tremendous complications whoa, 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 and often those are lifestyle issues. Go back to the 62 percent. 62 percent. You're identifying the illness, diabetes, hypertension, hypertension, and that goes back and correlates directly to the obesity issue? Absolutely, in a huge way, in a huge way. With ki kids and adults? These are, these, this is over the entire population. Mm -hmm. Clearly it's, it's probably much more prevalent in adults. They're much more likely to be chronically ill. So therefore, the need to deal so directly with childhood obesity isn't simply, oh, let's deal with that obesity issue. You're dealing with a whole range of medical and health related issues, Absolutely, correct? Absolutely, and they are intertwined inextricably. Jean, why have we not made more progress in this area? That's a, a difficult, uh, complex question, but, but let me, if I could, get back to a point. Sure that uh, was raised earlier about education. Yes, and we, how important that is to it's access. absolutely vital. And I'll give you an example. In our diabetes program, 
most of these individuals are overweight, be they child or adult. This is at the Parker, at the Parker Family Parker. Health Center. We have over 300 patients in our active diabetes program. Our statistics measured against Medicare, Medicaid, and privates is comparable to or better than by clinical parameters, and we attribute it to education, empowerment, understanding of their disease, and active participation in their disease. And this, Steve, is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, what do you mean to be actively involved or engaged in your disease? They have to know, and they give back to us because we provide care for nothing right. in this model, is compliance to the program that we set out for them, be it an appointment, be it medication, return for visit. And we have shown in a historically non-compliant population, everybody always assumed that the impoverished and the underserved were losers when it came to health control. They would not do the right thing. They would not do. What have you, you know found? what? We have found out they are as good as or better than a lot of privates because they take it so seriously if you spend time and teach them. You find the same thing? Yeah, and you know, the other thing I was going to say is I think that as we look at the obesity issue, there are sort of two pieces. One is this issue of education and personal responsibility yes, and creating support services. About. And the other is that one of the things you have to realize is it's not that all of a sudden we have a generation of parents that are just lousy parents, that we've succeeded in creating environmental, and poli environmental conditions and policies that make it much more difficult for parents to raise healthy kids. And things like uh, access to uh, parks, access to healthy foods in supermarkets, um, safe streets where kids can go out and play. Hmm. That we the, and there uh, we could spend a, a whole show so on time this. Out, but, for example, yeah, uh, they go see Jean uh, at the Parker Family Health Center. Or they go see one of mm -hmm. Dr. Clark's seven mm -hmm. centers, or Eve over at the uh, Zufall Health Center. And you start talking to a family about nutrition, and you say, you know. Your family, and particularly your children, if you want to avoid uh, the obesity issue, they need to eat more vegetables. They need to eat more fruit. And they look at you saying, hey, wait a minute. There isn't a supermarket right. in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay, so otherwise known as urban food deserts. Yes. And by the way, is this, this is not exclusively an urban problem. I want to clarify that. Is it largely an urban issue? I don't want to jump around too much here. Is it largely an urban issue, but also outside of urban areas as well? Because your areas are exclusively urban, right? We're urban. And it exists in urban areas, but there's more to it than that. Because even though you may find that you, you don't have access to those healthy food in these supermarkets, there are places in the urban areas that offer these healthy foods, the, the, the vegetables and the fruits. But do people know to go and buy it? Go back to the education piece. Because one of our partners over... Um, uh, at uh, Beth, Newark Beth Israel, yes. uh, tied to the Barnabas Health, si yes. Health System. We've been to at meetings, you and I, mm -hmm. been in meetings together with Dr. John Brennan, yes. who heads up Newark Beth, and they've talked about their initiative mm -hmm. in this regard, how hard it, it, in terms of creating nutritional programs and growing fruits and vegetables there, how hard is, to, is it to get that information out into the community so that they would know, parents would know? It is not a difficult thing to get the information out there. The point is that we have to make sure that the people who are getting the information out there has access to let people know that we exist. And so what you find is that with us for Newark Community Health Centers and Beth Israel, what we are doing as we're starting from scratch, we start by looking at people, young people who are at the age where they're engaged in activities that's going to result in children. And right. so what do we do? We try to get out for people to come in and take care of your health, do pregnancy testing to make sure that uh, you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. If you're pregnant, you need to come into the health center to start looking after your body. So we have centering programs through the Healthy Start program funded by the state, and we move people through that program so that they go through your pregnancy understanding taking care of yourself will result in healthy children. I go one step further. When it's time to give birth, we do our birthing at um, New York um, at Beth Israel. Whenever, as soon as the child is born or the baby is born, we have an arrangement with Beth Israel that our um, pediatricians go in immediately 
to talk to the, the parents. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting that communication at all the different stages to educate, to let them understand that there is, there are people out there like the FQAs in the hospitals who know. The federally qualified health yes, centers, go ahead. That for federally qualified health centers, we are there to take care of you from the, from the inception straight through to uh, adulthood. Okay, but I, I, don't want, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here, but I'm gonna go back to the, to the urban, outside of urban mm -hmm. areas. Ida. Well, you deal we, with the population cover, outside of urban areas. Go we ahead. do. We cover uh, rural areas of Warren and Sussex and Hunterdon counties. Uh, Morris County doesn't have a great transportation system either. And we know that people have a really hard time getting to uh, supermarkets that may have fresh fruits and vegetables. And yeah, you might say, well, okay, they have enough land to grow a garden. But right. once again, they need to, if they're renters, they need to have landlord permission. Um, they need to know how to grow a garden. They need to know what to do with the fruits and vegetables after they've grown them. You don't cut them up and deep fry them um, so that they right. need to, to get education and they need access. We've seen even in, there's an area of Parsippany that's been named a food desert. It's, it's astounding to me. There are lots of supermarkets, but if you're in an area with no transportation and there's no supermarket that you can get to, you're kind of stuck. And that wound up on the list. Okay, let's talk more about obesity. Um, obviously, this is being talked about more and more. Uh, the First Lady is, is, is talking about Michelle Obama. and, and I, I'm not sure how much of that is a public PR thing. I'm, I, I'm not sure how much of it is substantive. And I'm not sure, frankly, how much government is doing and should be doing as opposed to private not-for-profits. With your initiative, how much impact do you feel that the Y's can have, the YMCA's can have, on actually changing habits of children and their family members to actually begin to stem the tide of this childhood obesity problem, A and B? Is that the role of the YMCA, funded by a corporate foundation, as we're talking about here with Horizon? Is that the appropriate role? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I think there's sort of two interesting roles the Y is playing right now. The one is with her. Excuse me, a lot of people would say, what do you mean the Y is involved in this? Yeah. Well, yeah, you are, mm -hmm. yes. for obvious reasons. Go ahead. Yeah, well, it sort of hits our sweet spot. We value kids very much, and, uh, and we're concerned that if we don't do something, this generation of kids will have shorter, sicker lives than, than we currently have. And I just, we all sort of feel this responsibility, all of us, to try and do something to change it. So there's sort of two ways the Y is involved. One is, uh, through a program like Horizon where we're directly bringing program to children and families. And then the other is with Robert Wood Johnson, we're involved in policy and environmental change in five targeted communities, including Newark and New Jersey. This is the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Foundation. Go ahead. Right. And so we are, we have local community coalitions engaged in looking at issues like access to fresh foods, safe streets, um, and, and the, um, the kind of opportunities that families have to recreate together. So we're, we're, the Y is sort of doing two things. The one is, is with Horizon around program, but the other is trying to be a community organizer and convener. Mm -hmm. And we work with uh, uh, many leaders like the three great ones you have here today to try and drive this. But Gene, let me ask you, go back to the childhood obesity thing. Y is doing what they're doing. Other community groups are doing what they're doing. Schools. Schools are, are becoming increasingly involved. To me, Steve, the big disconnect is a controlled environment, Parker, an FQHC, the school, taking that home. There has to be a, a conduit that's continuous. The home. You got to take it into the home, and somehow we have to, and I hate to say this because I'm not a regulatory it. guy, but we have to try to influence rather than regulate the home environment so it's consistent with the message that the kid is getting in a controlled environment during the day. It does no good to give healthy meals in school if for the weekend that's abandoned or for the evening it's abandoned. So the children really could be the vehicle to educating the adults into the proper way of eating. Kids are immensely underrated in both their skills and what they take in and how they can change lives. So to me, that's the attack, is on the kids. And let me ask you this, the role of the media, and I, I, I don't want to turn this into a commercial, and we will not for, 
for the folks at Horizon, but we are able to do this because of grants from them, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the others who you can see underwrite this program. But I often wonder about our role, the role of the media in doing this. Um, and I've seen public service announcements that mm -hmm. you've done on this as well. What role do you believe the media has to play just in terms of childhood obesity? I mean, I haven't seen a whole range of public service announcements and spots dealing with childhood, childhood obesity where we in the media are given free airtime. Right, because the paid airtime, of course, is for manufacturers and uh, purveyors stuff, of, of... Which sometimes of, contributes to yes. the problem of childhood obesity, but yes. go ahead. Yes, and we know that there are, uh, you know, increasingly rules and regulations about what can be sold to children at what hours of the day, but we certainly know that there's, uh, there's a lot of advertising that's targeted uh, for children, to children, uh, and, and so I'm not sure that the media, even when they cover Mrs. Obama at the White House with her garden, are really uh, doing enough to counteract What could the, and should we be doing? I mean, listen, it's one thing to also cover uh, Mayor Bloomberg and an initiative, and you're, you're, you're laughing, you know, but I'm not, we're not here to debate or discuss that in detail, but listen, when, when the mayor of New York, or a high visibility official says, listen, we're not going to New York City allow you to get, um, you can get two of the big gulp things over 16 mm -hmm. ounces, but we're not going to sell the 32 ounce ones anymore, the, the ones, not the, 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 with the sugar in it, right? Right. Is that the role of government? Gene was saying, look, he doesn't want to regulate, he wants influence. Is it the role of government officials to be out there saying, listen, we don't trust you guys to do the right thing. You want to buy two? You buy two. <laughs> But well, we're saying we're not going to allow you to produce a manufacturer one that's 64 or 32 ounces. Does that make sense? I think most of us in local communities are looking for our local solutions. We are looking to government for some financial support for, for the efforts to find local solutions. I think we are uh, uh, looking for government to give us information. Um, Zufall Health Center is one of 50 teams from around the country that's being sponsored by the Department of Health and okay. Senior Services to um, uh, have a, a healthy weight collaborative. But you where want we more have regulation. community partners. No more regulation. I think what we are looking for is support for local answers. Dr. Clark, I want you on this and also talk about in the few minutes we have left. National health care reform and the potential impact, positive or otherwise, on this. Go. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wanted to say that it's not that we need more regulation. What we actually need is for guidance. And if the government provides guidance, then it allows us to make choices. Okay. For, and a typical example, nutritionists. We find that we are hiring nutritionists to give guidance to the population how to eat. But us as a health center not being reimbursed for that service. So how do we afford it to provide nutritionists so that they can give guidance to the public? Okay. That's right. an issue. National health care reform, Supreme Court court has made their decision, okay? States are figuring out what they're going to do. Not good as we do this program. There's a presidential election being held. We're not here to talk politics. We're here to talk access to health care. Question, Gene, do you believe that, well, question this way. What impact do you believe national health care, if implemented as we try to understand the law, um, will have on improved access to quality health care, particularly as it relates to childhood obesity? Best case scenario, everyone should have access. Is the operative words there, best case best scenario? Best case scenario. Go ahead. Uh, we at the Parker uh, may be uh, an endangered species Why? because we're volunteer driven. We are not funded by the government. We are dependent upon voluntary donations as well. Well, how could, hold on. If we're trying to improve access mm -hmm. and trying to have everybody get access to health care, particularly those without insurance, how could an organization serving 100,000 people since 2000 be in jeopardy here? It doesn't make sense. Well, philanthropy, as you know as well, Steve, is being challenged as a, a tax deduction. We are entirely dependent upon the philanthropic individual. We get go no government money. So we could be put out of business in by a, national health care reform? By national health care reform. That's a possible. Do you believe that's an unintended consequence that could, as opposed to an intended consequence? I don't think it's an intended consequence. We have at Parker talked about federally qualified status. We kind of like our model. Uh, we have 300 volunteers who donate their time. Great people. And they're selfless. Yeah. And they love it. They love it. Let me just say this. Uh, I don't think I'm editorializing in any way that's inappropriate for public television. 
if the Parker Family Health Center were ever to go out of business, that would be a bad thing for a lot of people who depend upon you. To all of you, keep doing the great work you're doing. I promise won't be the last time we talk about this. Thank you. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. And 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, making healthcare work. And by MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey. The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Brought to you by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. If you're a small business owner, you can actually pool together with other small businesses the same way large companies do, to help your employees make the best choice for their health care coverage. To learn more, information about health care options is available at the New Jersey Citizen Action Helpline, 1-888-654-3893. Brought to you by the Health Care Foundation of New Jersey. This is One on One. Join me as we get up close and personal with some of today's most compelling personalities. This is one you can't afford to miss. Weeknights at 7 and 11.30 p.m. on NJTV and 12.30 a.m. on 13.